October 5th, my boyfriend's birthday. Today we picked up three of his cousins who live in the area, which, lol, is three more than I have in my entire family tree. And we visited some small villages, including this one, which apparently has a reputation throughout history for being a town of witchcraft, specifically witchcraft that morphs animals and humans together. This is their mercado, or basically like outdoor farmer's market type of thing. And then we had these beautiful pupusas. And after arguing over whether or not eating hot soup in 40 degrees Celsius heat actually cools you down or not, we all drove together another hour in to the boonies to visit volcanic thermal hot springs which i've actually never been to hot springs i don't think ever in my life anywhere in part two of my el salvador travel vlogs i'll be highlighting the rest of the beautiful songmont bags that i took with me to style with all of my outfits which include the vegan leather luna bag in cloud new shade of gray drippy roof bag and the latest songmont bag in my collection the denim drippy tote would you believe me if i told you that this gorgeous leather grain was made of recycled ocean plastic and waste materials no Okay, well, I wouldn't either unless you told me. And I'm honestly still floored. The results of Songmon's process of recycling marine litter is one that maintains the texture and feel of genuine leather, full and rich in texture. My favorite way to wear Luna is over my shoulder, but being the queen of versatility that she is, you can also wear her crossbody with a detachable strap or like a clutch. Undergoing an 18 karat gold plating process, which makes it 30 times harder than regular plating. Everything about her is environmentally friendly, sustainable, and yet still she finds a way to be the chicest bag in the room. Illegal. The drippy roof bag, which I wore on the last day in El Salvador draws inspiration from traditional Chinese architecture. She's made of premium calfskin leather, is somewhat of a shapeshifter depending on how many items you fill it with, can be carried in hand with a short strap, cross body, on the shoulder with the longer strap, or in hand as a clutch. Although her biggest flex I think is definitely the ears on both sides, which are magnetic and can fit your phone, lipstick, or whatever else you need to quickly grab without digging inside of your bag. And these four foot studs at the bottom of the bag protect it from stains, scratches, or whatever other questionable surface you lay her to rest on. Now, as a girl who loves denim and most importantly loves denim on denim. This new medium drippy tote is my new favorite everyday bag, mostly because it is so different from anything else I have, but also because it can literally fit everything I need, including my 14 inch laptop. The calfskin leather padding at the bottom ensures that it won't get deformed even if you stuff it to maximum capacity. The widened strap reduces shoulder pressure and gives you the flexibility to wear crossbody. And just like the last drippy roof bag, it has four foot studs at the bottom and magnetic gears on both sides to keep your phone or cards. Now let's get back to the vlog. Hey guys, so we are currently at these really cool thermal spring pools in El Salvador. I have kind of no idea where we are, but they look so neat. It looks on par with the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. And then there's me, the only one that doesn't speak Spanish and has no idea what anyone is talking about. This was actually one of the things I was most looking forward to seeing in El Salvador, which is orchids growing from a tree, which is how they, I think, grow in nature. Um, I'm sure many people are used to this, but it's the first time I've paid attention to it since I've fallen in love with growing orchids. And wow, nature is freaking awesome. Me, I wish you were a girl so you could take sleigh pics of me. Boyfriend, I can do it, I can do it, want me to do it? Something new that I've been doing with my makeup recently is using this halo stick by Smashbox, which is similar to the Touche Eclat, but obviously the shade is much darker than my skin tone if I was gonna use this as a concealer. So I use this to line my lips because it stays much longer than a lip contour or lip pencil. And honestly, I use this because I don't really know which lip liners out there stay for a really long time. Probably none. I just have really pale lips and I think this helps me look more alive. What was that? Where did those come from, right? So today is kind of somehow already the last day in El Salvador. We started the day by putting in some work and shooting some pictures for a brand deal that I had and then buying this $1 coconut. So when you get coconut water or really anything here, they put it in a plastic bag like this, which as you can imagine, is super convenient for on the go and handling other things. After this, my plan is to find somewhere to buy coffee because if you guys didn't know, El Salvador is one of the places where they grow coffee like really good coffee and I want to bring my mom some and buy myself some coffee because I can no longer drink Diet Coke. I have honestly known this for so long. I'm a chronic habitual Diet Coke drinker. It, I'm very ashamed of it. That's why I 
generally try never to talk about it because it is pretty shameful. We all know better than that, right? But honestly, it just hits the spot. Like, what can I really say? I love the way it feels in my stomach, like the burn. And I love the caffeine. There's just so much I could say about Diet Coke that I love. But um, it literally has rotted my teeth, which I have fixed. And I don't want to have to get my teeth fixed every single freaking four years because of Diet Coke. So that's it. I quit. I quit my Diet Coke addiction. And I have to buy an espresso machine now so that I can make myself lattes because obviously I'm not giving up caffeine, right? Like who could do that? I'm sure many people, but, and I'm sure I could even do it, but I just don't really want to. You know, it helps. As you guys can see, it is raining. We're trying to go find somewhere to eat basically right now. You tell me what the plan is. I don't know, but I have some homework. I forgot. Dicen que el amor existe, pero en verdad todo tiene fin. Ayer estaba triste. So this place has a really big slide, and every time Kevin comes here, he sends me pics of him on a big slide. And it's at the top of a volcano. And as you can see, we are in the clouds. It's not at the top, but it's close to the top. Almost. Oh, it's so much smaller than I thought. I thought it was like... Oh, it's, it goes down. Oh. Forever. <laughs> yeah, she said go now because if it starts raining hard, you're not gonna... Okay, A, that was really fast, and if I had to do it a second time, I wouldn't. B, it did in fact start pouring rain as soon as I got to the bottom. C, I ran up the hill as fast as I could to avoid getting drenched, which you'll see what happened. They've been playing like every single Taylor Swift song known to mankind. It's kind of sweet. Imagine going to a restaurant and literally the only music they play is Taylor Swift. I'm kind of into it though. A lot of her songs are like kind of sad. Sad in the way that they remind me of high school and having crushes on like weirdos. So tomorrow I'm going back home and there are three things that I'm super excited for. One, obviously kissing my cat. Two, taking a hot shower because I have not had access to hot water here, at least in like the shower sense in a very long time. And three, flushing toilet paper. I wish I was a Swifty, you know, I wish I really liked your music. I feel like it would be a really fun thing to be. We have separated. And now I'm flying back to LA and hoping that everything goes well with my documents. Anyway, sorry, let me add a little bit more context. Um, he's going back to Toronto because that's still where he lives and where he still goes to school. I'm going back to LA. But we're going to see each other next week, like end of next week again, because we're going to Austin together for Formula One. I have a job there and I get to take him with me, which has always been one of my dreams because whenever in my life I have traveled for work, I've always traveled alone. The shirt is the greatest thing in the world, am I right? So obviously, like, no makeup, I look like shit, super tired, but I'm home. I'm home! Clearly, I'm back home, so they did let me in through the border, but gosh, was that nothing like what I expected it to be like. <sighs> First of all, when I landed, they made me go in the Customs and Border Patrol line of American citizens, if you've ever landed in America and had to go through like customs, you would know that there's a non-resident US line and then a US resident or US citizen or green card holder line. And they actually told me to go through the US resident line, which as I was walking through like the green card holder US citizen line, I was like, 
It made me very giddy and happy because I could not believe. Anyway, so I go to the customs and they're like, so do you ever go to like the detention inspection center? And I'm like, no, I never do. But I know that I have to now with this card. And he's like, yeah, you do. So follow me. And he took me to this detention center. And I kid you not, there was like a hundred people there and it looked like they all they were all of the same nationality like they all just got off the same flight and they're very 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 strict in there about not using your cell phone so you can't like kill time doing anything except for staring into the abyss and like looking around and just getting progressively more stressed luckily they were not going in like chronological order so i did not have to sit there until 2 a.m which is what would have happened if they did so like 50 minutes pass and they call my name the stress begins i'm like shaking okay not that i i've never done anything illegal or wrong that they could like you know not let me in for but i was still super nervous because i don't i don't know the customs and border patrol agent took my passport and in my passport i I have a work visa that I used to kind of be able to be in the United States for. This work visa expired this past August and she saw the work visa and she's like, part of the problem is that there was people translating right beside me and they were like screaming and I couldn't hear what she was saying. But from what I understood, she was trying to tell me that I wasn't allowed to be in the United States, that I was supposed to have left the United States when my work visa expired, which I obviously didn't do. Stay tuned, I'll explain why. And she's like, oh, I'll forgive you this one time, but, uh, and the whole time I'm like, what, no, like I applied for a green card like a year and a half ago and I got accepted like halfway through and then my I-485 is still pending. And my lawyer told me that I'm allowed to stay here because I did adjustment of status. Her tone was like as if I had made a mistake. And believe me, I was incredibly stressed and anxious over making mistakes. So I really made sure that I wouldn't make a mistake because this is kind of a really big deal. I tried to explain that to her and then she's like, okay, just give me a moment. I'm gonna look on your file and I'm gonna see. And her computer was like super slow. So it took her like 20 minutes. And then she was like, okay, so where are you coming from? And I'm like, El Salvador. And she's like, oh, I love El Salvador. I've been there 10 years ago. Such a beautiful country, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah. Great, great place, for sure. Clearly, she goes on my file and she sees the fact that I was not supposed to leave the United States when my visa expired. And she sees the fact that I have a pending green card. And she's like, <coughs> she doesn't say anything. She's like, <coughs> have a nice day. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. Did I do something wrong? Can you please explain to me? Because like, if I don't wanna make mistakes. And she's like, no, no, you're good, you're good. You didn't make any mistakes. Good luck with your modeling career. And then, as I was leaving the door, this young, beautiful woman is like, Sonia? So she like recognized me. She said hi to me and I was like, uh, hi. Like I just waved at her and I'm like, good luck. I would love to stay in chat, but I'm really trying to get out of there if you know what I'm saying. So, and then I spent like an hour in traffic shaking like calling my mom being like, I cannot believe this fucking just happened to me. My mom really didn't want me to travel and like, really tried to talk me out of it because she's like, it's a huge risk, like you don't wanna do it. And I'm like, well, you wouldn't believe what happened. So stressful, like what the hell? I don't know how they like work in their detention centers, but those are like places I really am looking forward to never having to visit ever again once I get a green card because that is just not a happy place. And I feel for every single person in there that doesn't speak English and has to like, I don't know, like what if they're told you can't be here? Like what happens? They have to fly back home? It's fucking crazy. Internal screaming, but look at her.